What's up everybody, JJ here. Today we've got a very special review. I know I say that about a lot of reviews I do, but, but when I was planning this one out, I was thinking, and I think this might be my favorite piece of tech I've bought in the last year or two. It's a tool that every time I use it, it brings me joy, and it's such a revolutionary jump over what came before it. This will basically replace something as simple as a Swiffer wet jet, but instead it's got this super smart robot attached to it, so it's just amazing to use. I'm going to quickly talk about the machine, and then I'm going to share with you five tips that will help you get a cleaner floor out of it. So let's get right into it. First off, a little disclaimer, I was not sent this by any company, I was not paid for this review. I bought this myself a couple months ago and I've been using it and I really love using it. But there were several little tips I learned from using it that I wanted to share so that's why I'm making this review here. This is the iRobot BravaJet M6. The black version is the same as the white version, it's just a different colored plastic it's made out of. When we bought it, the black one was more on sale than the white one. If the white one was more on sale that day, then we would have just gone with that one. So if yours is a white version of this, it's the same machine. But I do like this darker color scheme, especially the black on gold that they have going here. It really works well for us since we painted our baseboards black, that this black base station really melds into the wall. It just looks really nice. It is kind of amazing how simple this machine is for how great it is. It's simply a canister inside. This holds your cleaning solution mixed with water. And then on the bottom, you put these Swiffer pads, basically. They're these specific Swiffer pads you have to use for this but they just clip on the bottom and it goes around spraying the solution in front of it and then running over it with the mat. And that's where the similarities between this and a much cheaper mopping machine would do. This comes with a lot of smarts with it that make it just amazing to work with. So it's got a camera in here that scans through this little lens to map out the area around it and that way it maps out the rooms it's going through and after it's mapped out an area you can even go into the app, segment off different sections and then you can tell it to mop just certain sections at a time. For example, if you just use the kitchen and you're in the living room, you could say, hey, go mop the kitchen for us, and it will go mop the kitchen while you're in a different room. Another thing I love about this base over the regular vacuum base is this attachment down here. So this part goes against the wall and has your actual charging pads, and this is just a big plastic attachment to it, which I think the functionality of it is to get once this is a wet pad at the end of the run, it comes back to the base and charges. The wet pad is sitting on this plastic base instead of sitting on your floor. But my favorite part are these little tracks in it. There are these two little indents for the tires to sit in, and that lines it up perfectly. I have so many issues with the Roomba vacuum. We've got, I think it's the last generation, it's the 960 vacuum. And so often it, it tries to line up to charge and it's just slightly off. And then you come back the next day to try to run it and it says the battery's dead. So you got to get back there and try to line it up again. It's just a big hassle. I wish there was the thing that would line up the feet and just make it perfectly in line. This thing is always charged because this extra piece works flawlessly. But that about covers the overview of the machine. It's such a simple machine. Let's go set it up and I want to show you some of the smart things it does while it's running. So Ada wanted to be in the video. This is our puppy. She's a Great Pyrenees, probably, mix. She's a little rescue. And this is her update on how big she's getting. She's in that puppy biting phase. I'll put her age up on the screen somewhere. But I wanted to document how big she's getting here. So I wanted to show you just how easy it is to set up and run. Here it is on the baseboard showing how well it blends in with the... We got a dark green wall here. And we painted the baseboards a dark charcoal black color. But now that the tank is full in here, the pad is on the bottom. I can simply say, hey Google, mop the dining room. And it just pulls out and starts mopping. One of my favorite feature it does, it drives forward, maybe it'll do it. Then it backs up like this and then sprays forward. That way it will never spray liquid onto, say, your drapes or a rug or off the stairs somewhere. It always makes sure it's a safe, flat place to spray and then reverses and then will spray onto that flat area. So now let's go into time-lapse mode.
And now I wanted to cover my five tips for getting a quicker, better clean every single time. First one I would recommend is buying multiple of these washable pads. These are super great, super easy to use, super easy to wash. You just put them in the washer on a delicate cycle and then put them out to air dry. And they're ready to go again. I bought like 10 of these when we bought the machine. The box only comes with one reusable pad. And these are just some generic brands that I bought off of Amazon. I tried a couple different brands to see if one would be better than another. And they're all comparable. If you put it through the wash, I can barely tell a difference now. I would recommend going with whatever has a bunch of good reviews. I'll link the ones I bought down in the description below. An extra tip, we'll call this tip 1.5, is when you put your pads on there, pre-wet them. Just run them under the sink to get them a little damp before you put them under there. That way it will start the run and it'll be nice and damp to get a good clean at the beginning. Otherwise you're just putting in a dry pad down here and it takes it a little while for the solution that it's spraying out on the front to really soak the pad. My next recommendation would be to stock up on the solution. This is the official solution and I haven't tried any generic mopping solutions in there. I'm kind of wary of putting random solutions in here because it could gum up all the delicate hoses and stuff in there. But if anyone else has been using any generic cleaning solutions in their machine for a while now, let us know in the comments down below. That could be really useful information for the community. But I always stock up on these. I always buy them about two at a time. And when I'm out of one, I'll go ahead and stock up on some more. So I always have several bottles around. Sometimes Amazon will go out of stock for a while. At least in the past year, it's been that way. So I've always kept at least two bottles on hand. And for tip number three, I would recommend you pre-measure out what it says to put the correct amount of solution in here, and then just take a Sharpie and mark that line. Now I no longer have to use this to pre-measure out the cap fulls. I just fill it up to that line, then top it off with water, put it in the machine, and it's ready to go. It's way faster, and I don't spill this way. Before using the cap, I would always spill little bits here and there, and I don't want to waste this stuff just pouring it all over the counter. I want it all to get into the machine and clean my floors. The next tip is in the app, after you've connected your robot, Scroll down to Robot Settings, then go into Wet Mopping Preferences. Here you have two options. There's Wet Mopping Behavior and Jet Spray Amount. Wet Mopping Behavior, I usually leave at Standard, but then down at the bottom, the Jet Spray Amount. If you're not mopping a huge area, I would recommend doing the High Spray Amount. Once I switch that one to High Spray, it seems like the floor is much cleaner afterwards. The original was fine, but I have noticed adding extra spray just seems to clean the area a little bit better. That's my tip number four to get a nice clean. Just bump that one up to the high setting. The next tip to speed up your runs, if you've already had this and you've run through once and you noticed it was really slow. The first couple times I ran this, it was running really slow. And then I did a mapping run. It goes through and it doesn't do the same cleaning that it normally does. It just goes around and scans the edges and sort of learns the space. And then once it's fully learned a room, it's way faster to go through and do the cleaning since it knows where all the walls are, where the doorways are. So if your Roomba hasn't fully mapped out a room, I would recommend just doing a mapping run first. And it makes your future cleaning runs just that much faster. But that about wraps up my tips for using this. I genuinely love every time I use this machine. But let us know in the comments down below if you use this machine and you have any other tips that I forgot to mention here. It can really help other people out. If you've figured out some amazing tricks that I don't know about, I would love to hear about. And while you're down there, if you found this video useful, hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss any more upcoming videos. I hope you guys have an amazing day out there and I'll see you in the next video.